Welcome to this edition of R&B Reviews. Uh, this week we'll be reviewing Inglorious Bastards. I am Brendan, and with me is guest critic Dave. I'm Dave. So, Inglorious Bastards is a real amalgamation of sort of plots and stories, but a couple of them concern a Jewish girl's revenge plot against the Third Reich, the Inglorious Bastards themselves, a uh, elite undercover unit put into France and Germany to disrupt the Germans and uh, basically spread fear. And then there's the character of Hans Landa, a German officer, as we see him weave through all the storylines and hunting more Jewish people and trying to hunt down the bastards themselves. So Dave, what did you think of this movie? I thought it, I thought the whole thing was like pretty much funny and off the wall really, the way they did everything. Yeah, the uh, it's, it's a real different movie from what I expected it to be. It started... I, I had a vision of it in my head since it's Quentin Tarantino. You think with his other movies that he'll go a certain direction with the film, and he really doesn't, and it kind of starts off maybe from the opening scene. Yeah. And, of course, the opening scene isn't like a quick introduction to the movie. All of... The whole movie is pretty much separated by big, long, 15, 20-minute dialogue set pieces. Right. And it, it doesn't boast a lot of violence or action... It's really dialogue-driven and character-driven. Right. Every single scene, and there's uh, plenty of different languages being tossed around and lots of subtitles. Yeah, the one thing I didn't like about the subtitles was the, uh, they, they'd flash them on there, and they, they didn't put them up like, long enough. I had trouble like reading them fast enough and everything. I think that depends on someone's sort of exposure to subtitles. I've seen plenty of movies that you know have had subtitles and you get used to it after a while and with this film Tarantino put some of them in different colors so it, sometimes I feel like he was almost making it easier for the yeah. viewers to read it and he I like mean, even yellow a lot and stuff. Even though I couldn't read them fast enough I could pretty much tell what was what was gonna happen and what was going on basically and what they were gonna do. Now the downside of the subtitles I found was it's, you don't get Tarantino's sharp, witty dialogue from subtitles. Reading them, you don't really get it. It's all about the delivery. And when they're delivering it in French or German, you have a hard time picking, picking up those nuances than when it's said in like English or something. Like, you know, the scene with uh, Vincent and Jules in Pulp Fiction, you know? Right. There's a lot of fluidity to it and stuff like that. And I kind of felt using subtitles in different languages sometimes hindered that sort of Tarantino trademark dialogue. But it didn't, it didn't bother me long enough to get right back in the movie. I mean, the film was a lot of fun, and like you said, it's, it's really funny and off the wall. It's not what you expected. Yeah, it's not like most Tarantino movies. Everybody's serious, and they just want, they're just being violent. I mean, it's, this was like funny and serious and violent all at the same time. Uh, yeah, it's definitely hard to put your finger on exactly what kind of film it is, because there's so many different themes and whatnot being tossed around. And they're selling this movie in America with Brad Pitt's name all over it. And Brad Pitt is a he's a supporting member of this big ensemble cast. So if you think you're going to this movie for like a Brad Pitt beating up Nazis extravaganza, you're going to get that in parts of the movie. But he he doesn't dominate most of the film. Yeah, the I mean the way they the way the critics sold the movie, it was basically like Brad Pitt was like the main character, but he's really not. It's it's really the uh, the Jewish girl. Yeah, it's really yeah, the main she, character because the story basically like focuses around her, and yeah, pretty much the film really comes to involves a, a movie theater that she owns, and she's off for revenge against the Third Reich, and they want to play a movie in her theater, so she figures this is her chance, and the whole movie just sort of comes together in its final chapter. All the characters, all the roads you've seen going in the film, they all sort of connect at the end, and the ending of the film is something I don't want to spoil, but. It's, it had me laughing and even got applause in our theater at the end. I know I was clapping, definitely. I was very yeah. 
I was too. Very satisfied with the movie, and there's a couple audio cameos in there. If you picked up uh, Samuel Jackson was in there for a second, and uh, Harvey Keitel, and Mutt, and Michael Myers. Yeah, yeah, Mike Myers. I was surprised to see him in in a, in a Tarantino film. And he does pull off his role pretty well, but he's he's really not the actor we should be talking about. We should be talking about uh, Christoph Waltz, who played Hans Landa, and he's he really steals this movie. He won. Yeah. Whatever the Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor award is at Cannes, he won that, and I can see why. He's great in this movie. Yeah, he play, He does a good job as a German officer. I mean, I've never seen too many actors really, you know, steal attention away from Brad Pitt in a scene, but he yeah. does it because I found myself watching him way more than I found myself watching Brad Pitt. It's hard, it's hard to be funny and play a uh, uh, an SS major officer, basically. Yeah, who's completely, you know, who's who's got a really dark task of hunting down Jewish people, and he does it to perfection, and he's really good at it, and he knows he's good at it, but he just played it perfectly. He's really funny, he's really dark, and he's creepy, and there's you know he's, there's just scenes of suspense with him, and the opening scene is really a testament to how great he can be in the film. Yeah. The opening, and I want to say some of this stuff later in the film, but we won't give that away. Right. Now, as far as things... We didn't like about the movie. I didn't like it that we. I wish I would. I wish they would have showed more on the bastards, because we yeah. like the only ones they really concentrate on was, you know, Aldo Rain, uh, Brad Pitt's character. He was the only one who got a lot of spotlight, and um, the character Hugo Stiglitz. You know, when I walked out of the theater, I said to a friend, "I was like, they really should have had more of him in the movie." You know, it definitely leaves you wanting more. Someone's, I was I was hoping to see some more Nazis get clobbered with the baseball bat. You yeah, know, they that only was really good. they were only gonna show it like a couple times like and, that. Uh, yeah. yeah, the uh, the bear Jew played by Eli Roth, who actually does not do a bad job in this movie for being a film director himself. Right, he, I thought he pulled it off just fine, and all his scenes were great. You know, he was another one who I wanted to see more of in the movie too. Yeah, I mean the bastards they were they they were really good in the scenes they had, but you didn't get to see a lot of them because well, there's a lot of other storylines going around. Yeah, but especially the baseball bat because that because the front. The the bot, the front cover of the movie is supposed to be like a German helmet hanging off a baseball bat, basically, and the baseball bat was like a main character weapon of the movie. They said, yeah, they didn't get to use it that much. But uh, what would you give this movie a verdict? I'd I definitely say go see it in theaters. It's not what you really would expect out of a Tarantino movie. It's it's probably one of his better films, I think. Yeah, I would probably also say see it and. You know, as a little note, he, he drops a lot of film trivia in there, particularly German film trivia, and I found that to be an interesting touch because I was wondering, how is Tarantino going to squeeze all his references into a period piece World War II movie? And he fits a lot of film references in there. It's almost his love letter to film. Right. It's it's almost like an educational standpoint because a lot of people don't know all that. And... Yeah, and maybe it will spur them, you know, remember one of those names and go out and try and look it up. But uh, yeah, RB Reviews says to see it. So thank you for watching, and uh, please subscribe if you like what you're watching. Uh, I'll leave a comment if you don't, and leave a comment if you do. We'll see you on the next edition of R&B Reviews. I'm Brendan. And I'm Dave.